How? How can this be that good? Well, I did ask you last video if we should do more fan showdowns and to say that you guys answered is the understatement of the year. So welcome back. Fan Showdown, season six, episode six. And this one's gonna be, this one's gonna be a doozy. I know I've said many times that these episodes are gonna be a doozy, but I really do. I do think this one's a doozy. Now for the life of the Fan Showdown, going back to like episode one, season one, there have been two camps of viewers. <laughs> there have been two camps of viewers for the Fan Showdown. There's the one camp that thinks that the fans submitted to the Fan Showdown should be just that. They should be fans that fit within the A12X25 frame. They shouldn't be crazy huge contraptions. They should be essentially fans. Um, kind of something that you could imagine seeing on a shelf at something, some place like Micro Center. That's what they think. And then there's another camp. A camp that I tend to fall into. And in this camp, there's no rules! So as long as your design is powered by the A12X25, there's one rule! You're good to go. Fasteners, gears, magnets, I don't care what, what you have in it. If you give me a bill of material and you tell me where to get it and it goes together fine and works, you're in. Some would say that's cheating. Others would say... Look at that, look at that, look at that. <laughs> look at that, look at that. He can't even hold it back. So, to figure this out once and for all, we're gonna do what the internet does best and we're gonna, we're gonna fight it out in the comment section below. So if you are in camp one, let's call it, or if you're with me in camp two, make sure to go down into the comments after this video and let me know, should fans, in this episode or in this series essentially be more like fans, something you would find on a shelf, or should we just let anything go? If as long as it's powered by the A12X25 and the A12, L, the A12X25 only, then uh, it's good to go. Now I've mentioned this before, but we have seen a trend develop this season of the Fan Showdown, season six. You could call season six uh, of the Fan Showdown the blower season, the blower fan season of the fan showdown, which got me wondering, do all blower fan designs, all the ones that have been submitted to the channel, have an inherent upper hand to more standard type fans? So today I picked out four interesting blower style fan designs for this specific episode of the fan showdown. We're going to see, do all of these designs finish at the top of the board in season six, the blower fan season, the, the static pressure testing. Now, first up, we have what I would call the most standard version of all the fans you're gonna see here today. This is the radial and it was created by Arto. The idea behind this design is to create a fan that would kind of fit within the footprint of the A12X25, but still be a blower fan. Now, I thought that this would be a great fan to pick for this specific episode because it kind of fits in with what that first camp of viewers wants to see in a fan design. They want a fan that fits inside of the frame. Nothing nothing crazy, nothing outside the box. The fan looks very similar to something you would find in like a blower GPU, if those even exist anymore, or like your laptop. These kind of look like laptop fans. The dome style shape of the fan helps channel that air rearward when it's used in a fan frame that's not fully optimized for a blower style fan, like the A12X25 frame. So it's an interesting kind of midpoint. Next up, we have the Jet Impeller, which was created by Tough Luck. This design is similar to what you would see on the compressor side of say a turbocharger. And we all know turbochargers are really good at creating pressure. The way a turbocharger compressor moves air is fundamentally different from how this fan intends to, to do the same, how it tends to move the air through the fan. To help the jet impeller move air rearward, Tough Luck has provided an air intake cone to be used along with it. Now, although this doesn't have that classical volute shape uh, face on when you're looking at this thing, it still does look like a turbocharger, which in and of itself is cool because turbochargers are cool and everybody likes looking at that little compressor wheel. Go spinny, spin, spin. Next up, we have Turbo Static, which was created by Charles. This one's interesting because the idea is very similar to the one we just looked at, the jet impeller. But if we were to say the jet impeller is closer to a turbo charger than a fan, this Turbo Static would be closer to a fan than a turbo. The same ideas are still at play in both of these designs. However, the Turbo Static has a much more fan type fan disc. And I thought that having two very similar yet somewhat different designs would be interesting for people watching the Fan Showdown that want to actually design a fan. You kind of get to see which style or which road tends to give you the most performance in this specific season of the Fan Showdown. Now, last up, we have something, we have something a bit nutty. This is the Centrifuge Madness and it was created by Gabriel. And this design kind of gave me the whole idea for this episode of the Fan Showdown. It's mad and I and I absolutely love it. One, it's absolutely huge. The intake is, is super tiny and you're left wondering what, what's going on in there? So let me try to explain. When we take off the top cover, the first thing you're gonna notice is an absolutely massive compressor wheel. 
The main compressor wheel is right around 200 millimeters, and then behind the 200 millimeter compressor wheel is like a back plate with four small openings around the edge that allow the air to move outwards and down into the next level. The lower level is where this thing is actually attached to the A12X25 frame, and it's where the airflow accesses the smaller compressor wheel. But before that compressor wheel, we have a small little air deflector on top that kind of keeps everything flowing in the right direction, so nothing kind of heads backwards. Essentially what we have here is a two-stage compressor. It's actually easier if I just show you the cutaway picture that Gabriel provided. It gives you a better understanding how things are working inside of this, inside of this thing. The air comes through the small opening at the front where it meets the 200 millimeter compressor and is forced outwards. As it's forced outwards, it's channeled through those four little openings into the lower chamber where it starts to make its way back towards the center of the fan, where it then meets the smaller compressor wheel. That compressor imparts even more energy onto the airflow and directs it underneath the air deflector out through the back of the fan. At least that's the idea. The big problem with this design that I had is that nothing is fastened together. There's no fasteners, there's no tabs to align anything. It's kind of all just, it's all just here. I think the idea was to glue this together, which is fine, but the problem is, is once you glue this together, it's never coming apart and you can't remove the A12X25 frame from it without just kind of smashing it to get to the inside. So I had to take some creative liberties to make this worker. I hope you I hope you understand. So the first thing I did, instead of gluing the two compressor wheels together, I drilled a hole through the center of them when they were stacked up and then used a bolt to help fasten them together. And then the housing of this whole thing, instead of gluing it together and making it impossible to take apart, I held it together with these two clamps. I think even though everything is not glued together, we should get the same amount of performance out of this as we would if it was glued together. If you disagree with that, which you, which you could, you might disagree with that, let me know in the comments down below, down below and maybe we'll make a a little standalone quick video where I just kind of glue it all together like it was meant to be. We'll run it and then when I want to take the fan off, I'll just, I'll just smash it, I guess. But let me know. The centrifuge madness came in at 47.4 dBA. The turbo static came in at 44.6. The jet impeller came in at 50.2. And the radio came in at 52.6. Now the first point I want to make here is that this thing is super quiet. I know it says 47-ish or whatever, but I mean this isn't this isn't a, a sound studio. This to the naked ear, I couldn't even hear this thing working to the point where I don't even know if it's actually moving any air at all. In the static pressure testing, the radio came in at 2.2 millimeters of H2O. The jet impeller came in at 4.2, the static turbo came in at 3.4, and the centrifuge madness came in at 8.7. Placing the centrifuge madness in first place, the jet impeller in second, the turbo static in third, and the radial in fourth, and overall they finished first, fourth, fifth, and 21st respectively. Yes, you, you heard that right, 8.7. This, this mamma jamma, with that little tiny opening, managed to produce 8.7 millimeters of H2O of static pressure, which beats the wonder from down under. Something, something we all didn't know if it was possible. And I didn't think this would be the thing to do it, but shows you what I know. Oh, and before you ask, yes, I did run this without the, uh, the main big boy impeller, the big 200 millimeter one. And without that impeller, just the small one with the, with the little diverter in there, it only produced 6.7 millimeters of H2O. So what did we learn today? Well, we learned based on where these all finished with the without other than this one is that yeah, blower fans do have the edge in this season of the fan showdown, so that's good to know if you're 
looking to make a design to place high. Also, we learned that I don't know nothing because I honestly, even though I saw this fan and thought it was cool and wanted to make it for this video, there was no time did I think that this was gonna do good and I couldn't have been more wrong. So if you wanna design a fan to get in the fan showdown, you wanna make some sort of compressor or maybe you think that axial fans still have a chance, they just have to be done right, make sure to send your fan designs to the fan showdown at gmail.com, send them to me, send me a .stl or a .stp, I'll print them out, I'll test them, if you're just getting in on this whole series and you're trying to understand what's going on, uh, check the links in the description below because there's lots of resources on how this all works, where to send your fans, uh, resources you can use to make sure your design fits in the A12X25. And don't forget to go into the comment section and throw some punches. Till next time.